Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus did things in a language that religious people did not understand. And therefore, he created controversy. I think it's important to understand some things. We're going to tie this together. We have a tendency to criticize the things that we don't understand. Now, I've said this before, that those that have the Spirit of God, even if you do not understand something, the Spirit on the inside of you knows God when he hears it and sees it. Those that are truly born again have the Spirit of God. His sheep know his voice, and his, and his sheep have the ability and the capacity to recognize by the Spirit something that is of God because Holy Ghost recognizes Holy Ghost. But I think the thing about it is we have to be more sensitive to what's going on in the spirit because I, I'm telling you what I know, because as a sincere Christian filled with the Holy Ghost, but did not know everything about the Bible, people would tell me things and try to show me in scripture where it was and it just didn't jive. It just did not connect. So, so we're gonna tie we're going to tie this together. So it's important to understand that the kingdom has a language that goes beyond traditional church talk. We know the difference between somebody who's talking religious talk and somebody who really knows what they're talking about spiritually. And I think that's important. So let's tie this together. Preaching the gospel and being everything that God would have you to be is going to bring you into a place of confrontation and controversy. That's not a bad thing, hallelujah, because it's giving glory to God. And we want all the powers of hell to be shaken by the manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. St. Mark chapter 2. We're going to talk about this, hallelujah, starting at verse number 1. And it says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. So he's preaching the word and setting this up. Hallelujah. And they, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Jesus is, is doing things in a, in a way that they did not understand. He knew what he was doing, but they did not. Verse 6, But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Hallelujah, watch this. Why doth this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, oh my God, that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? Oh, that's supernatural power. Watch this. Whether it is easy, easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or so to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed and went forth before them all insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. Now, Jesus said some things and did some things that the religious people did not understand. 
And I think it's important that when you implement the plan of God amongst religious people and people who do not have a revelation, you are going to create a case of confrontation and controversy. But it's still God. Hallelujah. The supernatural power of God bucks against trends and tradition. Hallelujah. The things that Brendan and I talk about bucks tradition, but it's God. You need to understand that the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God because they're foolishness to him. And when you operate in the Spirit, you have to be true to the conviction because there is no law that says that everybody around you has access spiritually to the revelation that you're walking in. That's the reason why you're there. You're there to bring forth revelation. Now, Jesus could have very now we know Jesus was not going to be intimidated by anything somebody was saying or thinking because his, his job was to bring the manifestation of the kingdom, which he knew that they did not know. And when we preach the uncompromised word of God, it's going to buck against the prevailing trends around. But we have to be ready to deal with confrontation and controversy. Jesus was able to pick this up in the spirit. Hallelujah. And we're coming into a place right now. I feel this as I talk with you right now. That the men and women of God are going to be able to walk in a greater level of discernment and be able to discern what people are thinking. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I feel that I'm trying to be calm here. Hallelujah. As a believer, as a true preacher and teacher of the gospel, whether you realize it or not, when you preach the uncompromised word of God, you have been built to deal with confrontation and controversy. That goes with the package, and I'm going to tell you why. Anybody that's a threat to the kingdom of God is a candidate for confrontation and controversy. But knowing that God has given you the victory anyway, when you are a threat, the powers of darkness are afraid of you. And because they're afraid of you, they're going to try to mess with you. But God has given you his seal of approval. Nobody leaves here till it's their time to go. Hear me clearly. Nobody leaves this earth until it's time to go. And we want you to understand that if you're going to be used of God, hallelujah, this is the key, used of God, not of men, but used of God, you're going to deal with controversy. I'm not talking about this mess where people are in defiance and they don't have no power. I'm not talking about them, because those that, that, that talk a lot of game, listen, if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. If you're going to talk this stuff about obeying God, there's, there's got to be evidence that, that God is with you. He cried by said, oh, I feel this right now. Hallelujah. So listen, the true essence of a person who's walking with God is what happens. Oh, my God, we're seeing testimonies of people getting healed of COVID-19, getting healed of different situations with instantly or in the course of 24 hours. We're seeing stuff happen, but this is the real deal. Listen, I'm gonna, I want you to understand something. Everything that we do, we understand that because we operate in these things, we have to deal with confrontation. And many times... Com I mean, controversy is created. And some, some, and a lot of times, those of you that know the Apostle Young, my eyes light up when I have to deal with some confrontation. But honestly, before the Lord, sometimes it just happens anyway, just by doing the will of God. Hallelujah. I'm just being transparent with you. I was a smart aleck growing up as a kid before I ever became a born again believer. I was always a person that fought for the underdog. And for those of you know, I might be all of five, seven, five, eight. I mean, when I was going through basic training, I think I was five, nine. I don't, that's what they said. They, they may, they may have padded my, my time there. I don't know. But the bottom line, I'm saying this all to say this. Most of the people I, I had confrontation with, most of them was a little bit taller than I was. So listen, living up in New Jersey, if you didn't learn how to fight, you would be consumed pretty quick. And I and I had to learn how to do that though. So, 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 so 
there's some stories behind it. My brother teased me about some of the things that, that happened. But I'm, but I'm saying this is like, in the spirit, you have to be prepared to deal with confrontation. You have to be okay with controversy. You got to be able to sleep good when people have a problem with your doctrine. As long as it, it is correct. Hear what I'm saying? Let's put a disclaimer on it. As long as you're doing the will of God and not bringing some type of heresy or some type of false doctrine. Hallelujah. Jesus was bringing deliverance to a man sick of the palsy. He was manifesting something. He was, he was introducing a doctrine that the people of the church world was not implementing. And he was bringing very powerful, powerful results and God was getting the glory out of it. So I said out to say this. Everything we do needs to bring God glory. We need to bring glory to God. But in the process of bringing glory to God, you are going to open up some, you're going to open up some things. You're going to disturb some things in the kingdom of darkness. Because wherever there's light, it exposes darkness. And as Jesus exposed the scribes and Pharisees, because they was teaching a doctrine, and Jesus was coming and showing them up because we realized that through envy, they had a problem with Jesus. Hallelujah. And the scripture to back that up. We talk about the time when it was delivered before Pilate. So, but so listen, you are, if those of you that are candidates to be used of God, you're also a candidate to deal with what comes with it. But I promise you this. If you're on assignment before God, check this out. If you're on assignment before the Lord, guess what? Victory is already yours. I felt, oh my Jesus. Oh my God. We want you to be a facilitator of the kingdom of God here in the earth. Does everybody understand it? Be a facilitator of the kingdom of God. Do not worry about the attacks that come because God is also giving you the grace to deal with the attacks. Hallelujah. Whenever God calls you, he gives you the grace to do his work. And when he gives you the grace to do his work, he also gives you the grace to be able to deal with what comes your way. You need to remember what, what we're saying right now. You have the grace to deal with whatever problems come your way. You need to do that. That's why you need to fight in prayer. When something comes your way, fight, take authority. And it's okay to get somebody else involved. It's okay to get somebody who can pray with you. That's fine. It's a win-win situation, beloved. Does everybody understand it? But fight. Fight. I know I know what's going on in the government right now as, as we do this segment. Fight. <laughs> fight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fight. So we said all that. Say this. Hallelujah. We give God the praise right now. We live in a time right now where you have no choice but to fight. With, with sickness and disease, with the spirits of violence and intimidation and murder that's trying to overtake this world, we've got power. Oh my God, we got power. And God wants you to walk in the full manifestation of that power. Here and now. Somebody say with me, I got power. I have victory over every demonic spirit. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No bullet, no knife, no gun, no stick. No threat of violence will be over, over to be able to overtake me. You need to believe that right now. Put it in the atmosphere. Believe it. Stand upon it. If, if a person chooses not to believe what we're talking about, let them go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like I said, revelation is a personal thing based upon relationship. There's some people that when we talk about stuff like this, some of them don't get it. And I have to sleep good in regards because I believe it. I believe what I preach and I need to. I'm challenged to do the same things that we talk about. Does everybody understand it? I can't say something and just disconnect myself from it. Hallelujah. Because I want to be able to embrace the things that we talk about because that, that means we're walking into something. And we haven't even scratched the surface of what God wants to do. Hear me clearly, God. Oh, my God. Woo, I'm trying to be calm here, y'all. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Why be saved 
if you're not going to walk in the full measure of who God is and, and, and everything that the kingdom represents. Those that live godly shall suffer persecution. But you're going to be okay because you're in God's hand. We seal this word right now in the name of Jesus. We declare that not one word falls to the ground in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We come against every attack against your body, against your spirit, against your soul in Jesus' name. I feel the presence of God as we as we speak over you right now. We declare that the presence of God move over your life and bring a powerful transition that you walk in the fullness of your authority in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We love you. We want you to have a blessed time in the Holy Ghost. He cried by Sunday, by Sunday. Even though you may operate in methods that people do not understand, that does not mean it's not it's not from God. It, it is. But be ready to deal with controversy and confrontation wherever you go, because God has already given you the victory. We'll be talking to you again in the very near future. Be blessed, everybody. We oh come on, boss. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Just had a moment. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! God, I feel the presence. Hallelujah. Walk in the cloak of the Holy Ghost. Walk in a heavenly place. For we are seated in heavenly places. Talk to you soon. I thought I was finished. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, glory. I feel victory over this line right now. Receive it. Walk in God's divine protection. Walk in His holiness. Walk in His sanctification. Get everything that God would have you to be. And this is the other thing as we get ready to close. Don't ask God for something that you're not already using. In other words, if you want power and authority, use what you already have. If you want more anointing and more grace to walk in certain things, use what you already have. And by you using what you already have, God's going to give you more. We just have to throw that in for good measure. Oh, my Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Victory is ours. Seize it. Walk in the power. Thank you, Lord God. And we change the atmosphere where, where, where we are right now. Thank you, Lord God, for us here in Patterson. And thank you, Lord, for those that are listening to me wherever they are. Let the atmosphere change. We are under kingdom jurisdiction. Kingdom jurisdiction in the Sunday. Well, hey, glory. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I thought we was gonna finish. Hallelujah. We worship you, oh God. And we thank you. Oh my God, thank you. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't want to love and worship a God like this? Thank you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you, Lord God, that you've built us for confrontation and controversy. Thank you for the power of your presence. Give us a holy boldness to walk and preach your word. We seal this right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we're finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. want you to have a blessed time in the Holy Ghost. We will talk to you again. I'm still feeling this thing. Talk to you later. Be blessed. Music